Yes, Isabella Perdomo. Yes, good Hi. evening. Uh, my name is Isabella Perdomo and I'm in seventh grade. I'm here today to speak about FSA testing. After spending numerous days training for the FSA, I wondered what would happen to a student that is not present at school the day of the actual FSA test. My mom informed me that there were, are many makeup days that students can take the test after they come back to school. She then said that there is a testing window where all tests had to be completed. It, I then wondered what would happen to the students that could not make it to school in the testing window. She told me that the students would not receive a score, which led me to the next question. What is the consequence for not having a score? Apparently, there are, no really, there are really no consequences. My parents said that people do it all the time. It is called opting out. How come my teachers put so much emphasis on these tests if you could just skip them at lib? My mom explains that teachers are not allowed to tell their students about opting out. They are supposed to talk about their students, they are supposed to talk to their students about the importance of FSA testing. But aren't teachers supposed to act in the best interests of their students? What if they believe that FSA testing is not in the student's best interest? They have to lie. Are they teachers or are they salespeople? My dad tells me about a time when state testing took place at the end of the year on paper with pencils and lasted only three days. Everyone in the school took it at the same time so that the learning environment was not disturbed more than it had to be. <coughs> Coincidentally, the SAT is the same test that is used for college admission. Why aren't we still using that? So my curiosity led me to the realization that all this testing is not necessary. School would be so much better without the worry of FSA testing. There would be more time to learn. Perhaps this opting out option needs to be further explored. Perhaps students and the public should know that they have this option. Thank you very much. Yes, Ms. Navarro. Uh, Madam Chair, thank you. I have a question. I, this is for staff. Um, I don't know if the superintendent staff or students are, are, are is that op, is opting out an option? Through the chair, thank you. Um, great question, and I, I'm glad you asked it because I'm very concerned that misinformation is getting out into the community through our public speakers. Uh, according to Florida Statute 1008.22. Particip and I'm quoting the statute, participation in the statewide standardized assessment program is mandatory for all school districts and all students attending public schools. Mr. Superintendent, sir. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. And I, I will uh, go a little deeper than Ms. Iskier, though, uh, uh, based on her comments uh, went. Uh, not only is it provided for in statute, and whether we agree or disagree, that's the law. In our repeated requests of Tallahassee for clarity of information regarding this issue, whether through Messi Dadamendis Cartaya, directly through our CAO or myself, the answer has consistently been that there is no opt-out in the state of Florida. Here are the tangible potential consequences if individuals simply decide not to be there on test day. You certainly can do that. Let me tell you under the law what could happen. If a school does not test 95% of its kids, that's the first consequence. That dramatically impacts the performance of that school, possibly the grade. You and I know whether we agree with or disagree, and I have some concerns, actually significant concerns, that I've declared to this board and the state regarding the value um, uh, added model that the state uses. I have decried it, but I understand it, but I've decried it because it is not inclusive of all of the factors that I believe the VAM should include. For example, Florida's VAM does include English language limitation presence present in the teacher's classroom, but excludes poverty as a factor. When you and I know that more dramatic an impact than English language limitation is poverty. But that is the VAM that the state of Florida adopted, despite our complaining and despite our objections. I think I'm clear on the record on this issue. Simply saying or advising recklessly 
to defy the law could have dramatic implications. That's why there are elections to change policy and those who enact policy. But to simply say, uh, let's get out there and, and encourage students to opt out could generate a series of significant consequences, not necessarily to that student who was not tested, but to the school as a whole. That cannot be ignored. And with that said, Madam Chair, I would like to ask our attorney, because he is your parliamentarian, he is your attorney, if what I said is true or not. Is there a statutory provision that allows for opting out in the state of Florida? Uh, I'm sorry, through the chair. Yes, the superintendent is absolutely correct. Uh, we are required to uh, test 95% of the children or more. If we do not, there are severe consequences. Um, uh, we have uh, provided a memorandum to the board and to that effect. There are a number of uh, consequences to the district, which, um, you know, I'd be happy to send that uh, to the board um, again and um, update it because uh, I think the last time I sent it was last year. Um, but, yes, the superintendent is absolutely 100% correct. <laughs> and the last point, Madam Chair, I'll make, and I appreciate the question from Board Member Navarro, is... And again, I think this board's been very clear in its position regarding um, accountability run amok or out of control. We've taken all the appropriate positions, whether it's on value-added model, uh, on the pronouncements that we've made as a district, as a school board, as a superintendent. Our legislative platform provides for amendments and modifications to the accountability system as they exist. But simply say... Uh, don't sit for the test. There are no consequences. It is not true. And it's not just a set of implications or consequences on the school. It has a set of consequences on the teachers themselves because now you're going to skew the data on the basis of participation. So what could be a less than a, a favorable uh, model that influences a teacher's evaluation such as VAM by having fewer students actually participate in the testing process, you are skewing the VAM information that will injure the teacher's score, whether we like it or not. And lastly, to those who believe or say that the individual student does not suffer a consequence, I'd like Mrs. Kerr to very quickly explain the possible array of consequences for students on the basis of opting out, specific to promotion, specific to graduation, and the like. Mrs. Kerr? Yes, ma'am, through the chair. I I'm not going to use the term opting out because it's not a... It's not applicable, but if a student were not to take an exam that is required by the state, as Mr. Carvalho mentioned, there are severe implications. The former speaker, student speaker, mentioned that there were no consequences. So I want to make sure that the record is straight, that there are very severe consequences for students, the most severe of which is that our, at the 10th grade, um, God bless you, at the 10th grade, if a student does not take or pass, but certainly you have to take in order to pass, the FSA, English Language Arts exam, and the Algebra and of Course exam, students do not graduate. They do not earn a diploma. That is, I think, the most severe consequence. In third grade, as you know, the students have to sit for, it used to be the FPAT, now they have to sit for the FSA. If a student doesn't sit for an FSA, and that's why those windows are very broad, because kids ha get sick, right? Kids have, have fever. They can't come to school, and that's why those windows are broad, so that there's ample time to test the 95% or more of those students at the school. The student will be retained in third grade. Some will argue, well, they don't take the FSA, but then they can pass on portfolio. If a student is retained and that student is in summer school because they were a retained third grader, guess what? At the end of summer, they have to take an exam. They just don't go to summer school and miraculously show up in fourth grade the next year. They take not the FSA, but they're required to take another test, and that's the Stanford Achievement Test. So there is no way around, and there certainly is, are rather consequences to not only school sites, teachers, but also directly to students. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Margarita.